And joining us now, David Lepofsky. He is the chair of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance. And we welcome you back to TVO, David. It's good to see you again. Thank you very much. Let's just start with some basic background before we get into the voting issues. And that is, we're told there are a million people in this province with a disability. Disability defined as what? It's actually over a million and a half. And that's a person with a significant physical or mental or sensory disability. I'm blind. I have a sensory disability. There are people who have learning disabilities. People who either can't walk at all, use a wheelchair, may use a scooter, may may use a walker, uh, may not be able to go significant distances, but where their physical or mental uh, or sensory uh, condition um, uh, limits some of their activities uh, if the environment isn't built accessibly. Okay. A couple of Ontario governments in the past decade have tried to pass laws dealing with people uh, who have disabilities, uh, one in 2001, another attempt in 2005. Can you tell us what the 2005 Act attempted to do that the previous act didn't cover? Well, the first thing it does is it sets an end date by which Ontario must become fully accessible for people with disabilities. The, the good services uh, and employment opportunities everybody else enjoys have to be uh, accessible to us. That's 2025. For some, that may seem a long way off. But it was felt that we needed an end date. And I know of no other jurisdiction in Canada or elsewhere that set an end date. The second thing it did is it applied this to the private as well as the public sector. It covers everybody. Uh, and the third thing it does is it requires the government to develop and then implement and enforce accessibility standards that explains to people uh, what needs to be done to become accessible and, and by when. And to develop it, it's not just something that comes from Queen's Park. These are supposed to be developed in close consultation with experts in how to run a business, namely the business community, and experts in disabilities, namely people with disabilities. Now, if they've got 15 years to pull this together still, how do you make sure that they are sort of on track and on time to meet those targets? Well, we actually think they're behind schedule. They've had 20 years since the law was passed. They've already eaten up five years. Uh, there's a couple of ways, one of which is... We have in the European Union already a legislation uh, which um, bans um, the discrimination of disabled people in employment. And we think we should go further and extend that um, discrimination ban uh, to the whole of society. In Linares, Spain, the city centre has been completely rethought for people with reduced mobility, which includes a large group of people with minor disabilities. This includes low curbs and access ramps for shops, some of which don't have doors, which makes things easier for everyone. Here, all buses are accessible for people in wheelchairs. Kind of thing you notice when you're in a wheelchair that you don't otherwise uh, otherwise notice. Now that? there's always one seat here that flips up. Yeah. Now the challenge of getting on, coming over here, flipping this seat up, and actually sitting there is not going to happen. Right? It's, it's it's too difficult. What I typically do is come in. As fortunately, I have to block a bit of traffic because this is the safest spot for me to be in. So you show up to a stop, and all of a sudden, yeah. it's out of service. What's plan B? So what do you do? Go above ground and call wheelchairs. Yeah, or you don't. Wheelchairs is not a same day service. You yeah. can't even do can't that. Can't do that same day. Right? So you basically have to go outside and wheel to another accessible stop, which wouldn't be so bad if they were all accessible. Right? Because sometimes you're, you're talking. Yeah, sometimes they're. Sometimes you're talking kilometers to get right. to the next stop. Yeah. Like, if you look at where we were, the next accessible stop is Jamie So can you imagine the height? because we're recognizing that persons with disabilities live in our community, the population is significant, and we all want to have fully participating lives, fully um, engaging in our entire community. It's about equal um, access, it's about dignity, it's about independence for everyone. Hello everyone, we're here today with Brian Donald, um, who is a community services worker at Covenant House, and talking about January 1 of 2011. Um, so when I first heard about it, it was sometime in 
especially since they didn't know anything about what I had to comply with. So I was intimidated. I was very fortunate that I got a call uh, or I got an email message about uh, from the providers who wanted to come help me out. So. Good. Right. This Disability Act. Robert, let's talk about your findings. You know what? Let's not talk about it. <laughs> 